Back in 1993, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers premiered on the Fox Kids block and became a sensation in the kids' media scene, with their unique idea of blending Japanese footage from the Super Sentai series with American actors in new scenes. But few know that before the series premiered, there was a pilot that was used to pitch to networks the idea of the show. And it used to be considered lost media until literally six years after Mighty Morphin Power Rangers premiered. So why is it exactly called Power Rangers The Lost Episode? Hey what's up everybody, Dusty here and welcome back to their video and today we're talking about the original pilot episode for Monty Morphin Power Rangers, the OG Day of the Dumpster. And apparently this was promoted as a lost episode of Power Rangers, which I really don't think it is. I think there's actual lost episodes out there that just weren't made or were scrapped. This is like what happened when Super Mario Bros released the lost levels. It was just Super Mario Bros 2, but they had that in America and do I gotta explain this story to you guys? It wasn't a lost levels. It's all marketing. This was just pure marketing. This was a special event that aired on May 22nd, 1999 and was hosted by Austin St. John and Walter Emanuel Jones, who portrayed Jason Lee Scott and Zack Taylor in Monty Morphin Power Rangers. The fact that it aired in 1999 was pretty weird because this was when Power Rangers Lost Galaxy was happening. And if you're keeping count, that was six years after Monty Morphin Power Rangers. You just passed the fifth anniversary. Why didn't you show up for the fifth? Also funny enough, they had two actors that had left the show. Austin and Walt had left the franchise together during season two of Monty Morphin due to pay disputes. Yeah, it was true that ASJ did return as the Zeo Gold Ranger, but this was Walter Jones' only return to the series for nearly 30 years, until his time on the once and always Netflix anniversary special. They were here to talk about the history of the show, give some love, and show you guys the original day of the dumpster. I don't know why I'm saying you guys like it's now. I wasn't even born in 1999, I was just a little... A pilot for Power Rangers was made years ago though with Bioman, another Super Sentai series, but a more recent pilot from 1992 showed a lot of stuff different from what actually aired in 1993. But that's for later, let's talk about this lost episode mark anything. The intro was awesome, I gotta give it that, showing all the different Ranger cast members in a collage type format. Bulk and Skull was even there too. That was sweet. I don't think we can do that today though, there's like too many Rangers out there now. I would have to enhance to see their names. I did also say though that this aired during Lost Galaxy. Their names didn't even show up there. Where is the love? Where is the love? The set here though was pretty weird. It looked like a TV studio with a huge audio board. I don't think they were doing Power Rangers in that. And they had costumes of the gold Zeo Ranger and this cat creature, which I've come to learn is the Cat Zord from Power Rangers Turbo. Unique choice, I guess. Common question of the day, in the 30 years of Power Rangers, what's your favorite episode of all time? I gotta say, it may not be my favorite, but one of my favorites is that one RPM where they go behind the scenes of the Power Rangers show, but they're still in character. Crazy, right? Uh, leave a comment down below and leave a like to lock in your answer because 1500 likes and I'll do more videos just like this. The special was also one of the only times Super Sentai is mentioned in Power Rangers 2. They even had some explanation as ASJ shows what makes Power Rangers different from the rest of the shows on TV. While showing a bulk and skull gag. Does comedy make it different from Transformers and Ninja Turtles? I think they were funny too. Walter explains Sentai and how it started with the Go Rangers while showing footage of Jew Ranger, but eventually mentioned the show and how they took the characters and added American actors and boom, Power Rangers. Also fun fact for all you viewers that put an eye towards the credits of Power Rangers, they would name the Super Sentai of Origin kind of differently. They called Jew Ranger Galaxy Rangers, O Rangers, letter O, Car Rangers, Mega Rangers, and Giga Man. <laughs> that was simple. There was also a funny bit here of the two hosts comparing their episodes and how much better there were. Well, and great new episodes like the one where I became the Gold Ranger. Or my birthday episode. Yeah. Wow. Well, what about the one where I got to fight Goldar alone? Oh, yeah? Well, what about my spider episodes? I mean, it's well very interesting. Then the bros explained the whole Power Rangers series in under a minute flat, which impressive, but you know, let's be honest, it was only six years of the show. We also got a tribute to the characters of the show, showing recurring ones from MMPR 2, but not much love for anybody else like the Triforians or the Alien Rangers. It was also like a 45 second tribute. Could have been at least a minute. 
Anyways though, let's stop talking about this and actually talk about this lost episode of Power Rangers, this OG Day at the Dumpster. Or as ASJ called it, the never before seen pilot episode. Pilot episode. Why does he say it like that? Pilot episode. The original version of this pilot has its own opening with the classic Go Go Power Rangers theme. It's been the same. They didn't change it. We open to this bowling alley. No Ernie, no juices, community center, we just get bowling. Also, no banana shakes. Banana shake. <laughs> you know what will never be lost to me though? The E-Squad. Uh, subscribe and notification bell to join the E-Squad today. And uh, who knows, you might be one of the E-Squad comment of the day. Bow! Leave a comment down below, put the E-Squad in it, and you might be in the next video. Because if you're not, you'll be lost to time. Zack is out here smacking Jason butts, Billy and OG Trini talk geek, and Kimberly's even more of a valley girl than in the actual show. Full on splatting food on this 1950s ass villain. And his 90s looking villain group. Mafia members. Kimberly here is definitely far more self-absorbed and selfish than we've seen her in the actual show. And this mafia, like it, it, Bulk and Skull does not work in an Italian Sopranos looking mafia. They're supposed to be goofballs not actual jerks i think they missed the point on that one but they changed it so i guess it doesn't matter also i just realized where's skull I, I didn't even i forgot to mention that but honestly having the mafia chase the power rangers would have been funny they didn't do this until power rangers rpm so guess what happens next the teens start fighting each other literal physical assault jason kicks bulk in the face so much that bro is a strike a bowling ball can truly be a weapon in hard times also, Bulk, what happened to bro's hair? <laughs> Why am I talking like this? Bulk's hair is weird. Why are we doing this? Billy also gets a funny moment in this as well. This is just crazy though in general seeing this fight happen because this is more violent than anything Power Rangers actually shown. I, I understand why this was lost for six years. Why do you want to see this violence? Because as far as I know in the actual Power Rangers franchise and universe, it may have happened once or twice, correct me in the comments, but the Power Rangers don't physically assault other humans. They weren't Power Rangers though, but I'm just saying. That's what Psycho Rangers are for. But let's get away from the gruesomeness. Let's talk about other differences. Billy's glasses, everybody, they're different. Also, I got new glasses too, huh? This ain't no pilot episode, what do you think? But yes, the other difference here is that there's another Trini, an OG Trini, Audrey Dubois who played Trini this version instead of, you know, the beloved Toy Train. But you may be asking, why wasn't she in the main show? Well, basically it was because that Audrey wanted a pay raise, a little more money than she was originally gonna get for Trini. So what does Saban do? Fire her and replace her. I guess that solves everything. Moving on to Rita's dumpster scene. It was pretty much the same as the original, but what is Finster's voice? <laughs> After 10,000 years, it's good to be free again. Gross. Rita starts an earthquake. Also, I feel like they redid the lines for Rita here because she sounds different. Jeez, you made me step in a puddle, you idiot! Not as, like, loud and annoying and headache a do sing as in the actual show. Do you see what I did there? Do you get the reference? We cut to Zoltar and Alpha in this neon-looking command center. I'm gonna be honest, I like Zoltar's voice better. Kill me. Hate me in the comments, if you will. Also, Zoltar, different name from Zordon. Zoltar kind of sounds like a... A, uh, what is it? Like a, one of those vibe readers at the arcade. What are those called? Zoltar also seemed to be more expressive in this version than Zordon, visually showing his teeth and laughing along with Alpha, which by the way, was also pretty weird in this version. It looked like a box, like a telephone box. Like they had $2 in a dream when they made this outfit for Alpha. But it looks like a PC tower, but they gave him a mohawk though, eh? I can't do that. Alpha does it better than me. I'm glad they went back to the drawing board on that one though. Alpha, new Alpha, best Alpha. The Rangers then get teleported to Zoltar's command center by literally getting stretched. Like they're Elastigirl or something. It looked pretty gruesome. The following scene uh, is pretty accurate to what happened in the actual day of the dumpster. The Rangers don't believe that Rita has a bike and can ride it in the sky. Me either, to be honest. Zoltar then explains the powers as the Rangers turn into dinosaurs instead of their Ranger forms in the air pilot. They even prepare a little pose while they do that. That is horrific. I don't want to turn into an animal. This is not the Animorphs. 
which by the way, did you know they had 54 books in that series? I did not. We also get what they call the Transmorphers, and they dip. We get the putty fight going on. Did they always stand like that so menacingly? What a bunch of goofballs. Whatever, it's morphin' time. Obvious, Jew Ranger morphers and Jew Rangers in the background of the morph. Dressaurus. Jason does not sound excited. But hey, we get that Goldar fight from the first episode, ex except they were silent in this one. It was kind of awkward just watching them fight without them saying some hugzikayas and funny catch lines. What happened? We also get King Sphinx in this episode. For those who know, King Sphinx didn't actually appear until Mighty Morphin until episode four. So it was kind of weird and cool seeing him in this pilot. They all summon the Zords and also they're talking during the transformation sequence. Did that happen in the show? Yo, this is Zach. Me and my master droid are right on target. Also, the Megazord, the Dino Megazord, is called the Mega Dino Droid. Megazord is a much cooler name. Go, go, Power Rangers! Last scene, Billy does a split. Oh! And Zoltar explains how these guys are the best they can be while Zoltar is showing them footage of them assaulting other human teenagers. Embarrassing! <laughs> but here's one of the final changes in this. Instead of Kimberly going, no. <laughs> when, you know, a green joined the Power Ranger team, she says, Psych! <laughs> that was much better. They should have kept that. Always a classic. Go, go, Power Rangers. Put the hand in. Let's jump. And uh, let's do the theme again. Logo. And there we go. We're out. Wow. How peculiar. This pilot was wild. Imagine how the show would have looked if it just kept following this, like the Neon Command Center, Zoltar, Alpha's Mohawk, the Mafia. It would have been quite an entering show, but I don't think it would have been the sensation that it became because Money Morphin just has that charm, that recognition, that campiness that made people fall in love with it in the 90s and made people still in love with the show today maybe this would have changed the complete history and it, the show would have never become popular. It's crazy to think, but it, the impact of this pilot can still be felt. Well, at least it was felt in, when the show aired. As it was a jumping point for a lot of the licensing negotiations that happened around that time. The outfits the Rangers have in this version, like Zack's vest, can be seen in coloring books, while the shape of Billy's glasses and hair can be seen in toy packaging and other material. It's even down to the art of the Trini art in some of these, having literally toys face and hair being slapped into Audrey Dubois' body and outfit in the show. Weird choice. So even though this was a lost, not really, lost episode, it's still a nice treat for Power Rangers fans to take a look back on what the show would have been like. And it showed fans of, of Power Rangers back in the 90s the true origin of the show explaining the Super Sentai series. It's that platform the show stood on top of to now be running for 30 years. It's crazy. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Dino Fuego. I'm also on Instagram, not Fuego. Have a good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you're at. And of course, and as always, stay awesome, everybody.